My name is Naz uh, Asen and I've been working with conservation through public health which is, as you, as you all know, it's World Gorilla Day today. And we're celebrating conservation through public health's work. And with me today, I am so honoured to introduce to you the Namagareka Queen Sylvia of Buganda, which for those of you who aren't residents of Uganda, it's a kingdom within Uganda itself. Um, Your Royal Highness, welcome. And I hope I've described that in um, an accurate way. Thank you very much, Nas. Thank you for having me. Oh, today. it's such a pleasure because you're a patron of conservation through public health. What I'm really interested in, and I'm sure people who are watching this, this um, interview is, what inspired you to get involved with conservation through public health? Thank you. Well, I was introduced to uh, CTPH by Gladys, uh, Dr. Gladys, who I've actually known for a very long time, uh, since she was a child. And I've always known her as a person who, a person who is, very, is very passionate about, um, about animals. And uh, so I was impressed when she came up and uh, told us about the CTPH initiative that uh, she and her husband, Lawrence, had uh, started. And pretty much I believed in the cause. I do believe in the cause of, of, of CTPH as it aims to, uh, to improve the, the wildlife and ecosystems, improving health, uh, or even people who are living close to the parks. So, and for me, I also saw it as a way of contributing to the development of my country, uh, you know, through conservation, which is uh, pretty much, uh, which is an important heritage for Uganda. And uh, the kingdom of Uganda, of Uganda in particular, um, is very keen on preserving animals. Uh, and we do this through our clan system uh, by preserving our uh, totems, which are actually mostly animals. So, you know, I really saw it as a very, you know, as a cause that I, I felt I should uh, pretty much be very in, in, involved in. And uh, I think, you know, being the patron of CP, CTPH for so many years has enabled me to bring uh, greater attention to this cause. Uh, to preserving the, uh, to co for conservation and preserving of our environment, so to speak. Yeah, and I really love what you're saying, you're, you're saying about conservation through public health, because, you know, with um, the pandemic around the world, it's become really clear that we can't, we live together with animals and the health of one can affect the health of the other. Um, and it's so, I think it's on everybody's radar at the moment. And, and I, I, I really hear what you're saying about conservation through public health, who approach conservation in a one health approach. We have to have a healthy environment. Our animals have to be healthy and people have to be healthy and taking care of us all. Um, absolutely. Um, but what, in, you know, and I love this idea of, of totems and the clans and how connected we are to nature and maybe sometimes we have forgotten that what in particular do you find fascinating about the mountain gorillas because i know dr gladys and conservation through public health are very they're focused on all wildlife but i know also know that the, the mountain gorillas are, are something that, that are very dear to their hearts so what do you find fascinating about the mountain gorillas mountain gorillas are First of all, the first sight or the when you hear about mountain gorillas is to be wow, you know, because they are huge, they are giants, as a matter of fact. Then again, it's fascinating to really know that they are very gentle, um, and um, as some people refer to them as gentle giants. And uh, in many ways, I guess, um, however gentle as they are, if they are threatened, they can be aggressive. But we're very lucky that in Uganda we do have, uh, we're one of the three countries that uh, have mountain gorillas and, and probably 
uh, most of the mountain gorillas are in our country. So it's really fascinating to see that such huge things, and as you see them, they can be that gentle. Um, I remember seeing them walking away as they see, they just look at you proudly and then they walk away. And um, as long as you're not uh, threatening them in any way, they will just mind their own business. And you know, so in, in some ways they're you know, similar to, to us. Well, yes, I, I suppose with the 98% DNA, they're our distant cousins, aren't they? Many, many ways. And um, I know that you tracked mountain gorillas, and, and I love how you describe them as huge, because I've never been, you know, been up close to a mountain gorilla, and so many people haven't. What was it like for you to track your first mountain gorilla? To me, I, it's one of the top three greatest experiences that I've ever witnessed. It was an incredible adventure uh, to track mountain gorillas. And that was back in, it was my first time in 2005. So I traveled to windy, impenetrable forest um, uh, national park. It was, uh, I remember we had, uh, there were different groups tracking and I was, I think, tracked the longest, and Gladys was part of that, I remember, uh, along with other uh, ministers from Uganda Kingdom, and we tracked, overall, I think it was eight hours, because it took us four hours before we saw the gorillas, and then another four hours back. And uh, we visited a group which is called Habinyanja Gorilla Group. And um, what was interesting too is that, I think one of them had just had a baby. So the Wildlife Authority asked me to name it, and I named it um, Tuse, which means I've arrived because, you know, for me, it was like a long way <laughs> to, to the, you know, to, to, to see these gorillas after tracking uh, four hours in this impenetrable forest. Amazing. amazing I place. bet you developed some muscles that day, Your Highness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was very fascinating. And then I was able to... Uh, while we were there, I launched uh, some of the uh, CTPH programs. And one of them, I think, was the IT program that we launched. And it's aimed at improving the lives of people who are residing uh, around the national park. As I said, it's very important to see that the two can actually coexist without affecting the other. And, and it's very possible. And I think CTPH has been able to bring that out. So... So this visit also aimed at uh, promoting domestic tourism. With all that we have in Uganda, you find that not many uh, nationals actually go to the parks. You, it's mostly there are people coming from outside, the foreigners come to visit the parks. So and we kind of take it for granted that this is just next door. We don't really bother to, to, to visit um, at all. So that was um, one of the aims to promote and, uh, and I, that it inspired Ugandans to go and track um, mountain gorillas, our national heritage, something that we have in our backyard, literally. I, I think that's such a lovely, you know, and, and what you say is that sometimes we look elsewhere, wherever you're from, and we don't um, maybe appreciate or are aware of the richness that lives in and around the areas that we live in, um, because it, it we may take it for granted or we think we have to go elsewhere um and i think particularly now isn't it lovely that that you know many ugandans there is a a beauty within their own country that they can appreciate and, and, and explore you know clearly mountain gorillas are are very close to your heart and um have inspired you i you know i also know that you do so much work and one of the things is you're the founder of the African Queens and Women Cultural Leaders Network. Um, then you really are um, focused on improving the lives of women and children um, in and around Africa. It's, and with Dr. Gladys being one of the few women leaders, how important do you feel it is for women to take a lead in conservation and to step up as leaders? Uh, first of all, um, I would like to say that we're very proud of, uh, of Dr. Gladys's work. And um, um, as a person who has actually seen her 
uh, as a child and I'm truly proud of the work that she has done as a woman, as an African woman. Uh, she's extremely committed and dedicated to conservation of wildlife and this obviously we can see it through the many, uh, she's been recognized internationally as you know with all these numerous awards. I keep on asking her, where, do you, where are you putting all those awards? Because <laughs> she's always global trotting to pick up these awards from, where, from all these different places. So we're extremely, extremely proud of her and the work that she has done in this area. Now, I believe that more women should be engaged uh, in all matters uh, concerning conservation and environmental uh, protection. Uh, they should take on uh, leadership roles in this field uh, to push the agenda further um, and deeper because when women dedicate and commit their time and resources towards any matters of development, uh, we see dividends. And so their actions are normally and, uh, driven by their urge to see a better tomorrow for their children, you know, a better world for their children. And um, so that they can live in a, in a, in a, in a, um, a, and prosper in a good environment. So this is one of the reasons that I think more and more women should really get involved, not just to get involved, but be in the leadership uh, of positions. And female leaders can more effectively advocate uh, for the needs of the family and hence uh, the nation at large. And without sufficient local leadership, uh, enabling policies uh, it will not be uh, made uh, to secure the future of wildlife and sustainability of the environment. So it's a, a definitely, um, that's one of the areas that are, you know, because you see them in, in many different other fields, but that is an area that we should see more engagement of women uh, in leadership roles. That's lovely. Yeah. And, and it, it's so true, isn't it, that, that we, there are still areas for women to explore and um, break into, you know, areas that have usually been dominated by, by, by men. Um, and it's lovely to see, as you say, Dr. Gladys, yourself, female leaders who are stepping up. Um, and, and finally, um, Your Royal Highness, what message do you have to share about conservation um, and World Gorilla Day with our planet today? Conservation and World Gorilla Day. Now, our planet is uh, currently facing unprecedented threats of climate change, uh, habitat loss, uh, species decline, and disease like, diseases like COVID-19. So a holistic approach uh, that contributes to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, is needed uh, to address uh, these threats. And uh, my call to action uh, this World Gorilla Day is to increase our efforts in addressing these threats uh, that are faced by gorillas in Uganda and in the other East African countries. Well, thank you so much. Or the other African countries at large. Thank you, Your Royal Highness, for your time and, um, you know, for sharing your experience and your message. Thank you, Naz. Thank you very much.